Pierre Poilievre's assertion of transparency and accountability in government tax policies. The bloc is now condemning the same tax increase that they just voted in favor of. Mr. Speaker, it seems that they are changing their positions. That welders won't have to pay this tax. Only the 0.13% wealthiest. Well, all the economists uh, contradict that. The fact that she has 300,000 businesses that she admits will be taxed and all of their owners will be taxed contradicts that as well. So there's one way we can solve this controversy. Will she com commit to put in law that no one in the bottom 99.87% will pay any new taxes? Yesterday, the IMF published a report on the Canadian economy. The IMF commented on our capital gains move and said it makes the system more fair and also said it will have no impact on investment or productivity. That's the IMF, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. I think we should just... Let's let's put aside the disagreement and even the debate on this and let's come to a resolution here that will bring a lot of calm to the millions of Canadians who are worried about their taxes going up. The minister claims that only the 0.13% wealthiest Canadians will pay. So why not just enshrine that in law? Will she commit today to pass an amendment to her tax bill stating that no one whose income is in the bottom 99.87% will pay any new taxes at all. Here, here. Quote, the monstrous increases in capital gains are making the rich vastly richer and creating a kind of aristocratic feudal economy. Do you know who said that, Mr. Speaker? The member for Carleton. Oh. Mr. Speaker, we're simply asking the minister to put her words in the law. Okay? So she's claimed that no one who earns less than the top 0.13% of income in the country will be affected. So, once again, will she amend her bill to say that no one who is in the bottom 99.87% of income earners will pay any new tax increase whatsoever? Yes or no. Yeah. Doesn't even understand how the capital gains inclusion rate works. Yes, right. That's a problem. That's a Second, the leader problem. of the official opposition disavows his own words in this house about capital gains. Right. But probably hmm. the most important thing is that the average south, the average income in Carleton is fifty-eight thousand four hundred dollars. Their MP is not on the side of working people earning that wage in his own. That's right. That's that is shameful. Only the wealthiest. 0.13% of Canadians are likely to support his stance that a promise to implement the new tax should be legally mandated. It's crucial to have clear and explicit laws to shield the majority of taxpayers from unforeseen tax obligations. This stems from a skepticism toward government claims that lack legal substantiation and a commitment to fiscal responsibility. It underscores the importance of aligning rhetoric with actions. Poilievre's call for a law revision can be seen as a demand for the government to earnestly fulfill its promises. Emphasizing transparency and individual responsibility in governance is commendable and can be viewed as genuine leadership aimed at reducing citizens' financial anxieties. Exploring the impact of tax policy debates on public sentiment, we see how uncertainty regarding potential tax hikes fosters anxiety and distrust in the government. Poilievre's insistence on legal guarantees seeks to mitigate these fears and enhance stability and fairness. Assessing Christia Freeland's response is crucial to determine if it effectively addresses public concerns or exacerbates political disillusionment. Freeland's defense of tax policy and her reference to the IMF report can also be seen as a critique of the government's perceived misuse of taxpayer funds. While her approach might aim to reassure the public about the fairness and economic impact of policies, it's vital to scrutinize the extent of national debt under the current administration. Freeland is likely to challenge Poilievre for not directly addressing his calls for legislative change, but despite potentially missing an opportunity to bolster public trust through transparent and decisive action, the government's measures can be perceived as an effort to replenish the taxpayer funds it has allegedly squandered. 